Are you tired of listening to German language all day long? Don't you just want to get your news and topics presented in English, even though you live in Germany? Then here's your solution. Yeah! <laughs> Elephant in the Room, an English radio show where we discuss things that people tend to ignore. Tune in on Color Radio on 99.3 and 98.4. Every second and fourth Monday of the month. Elephant in the Room, a radio show by the Black Rose Radio Collective from Dresden. Hate Mondays, be organized, stay cool. Today we have a friend and a comrade, Jan, from France, to talk about police forces and police in general in France in last years. Hey, Jan. Hey. How are you? Mm, quite fine. I'm free and happy. So after several right-wing terror attacks in 2015, back then with the Charlie Hemto um, and so on, police forces in France, as I remember, got like a huge boost in their possibilities. They were creating a lot of troubles. And the state of emergency was introduced with cops using new authority to attack different social and political movements, including anarchists in France. Can you describe a bit how was it back then and your own experience maybe a bit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually the situation was uh, this last 20 years was already like a bit creepy, but uh, this uh, terrorist attacks in 2015, like the Charlie Hebdo, but also at the end of the year, the Bataclan attack and the cafe in Paris, it uh, of course changed a lot like the situation, uh, mostly um, because of the state of emergency. And uh, let's say that the last, uh, the day, the years before the state of emergency, uh, emergency, it means like before 2015, let's say that the police had still a huge lack of means. How can you, can I say this? Like legally, they had not so much possibility as they got afterwards. It means uh, they needed like a lot of uh, new laws to be implemented to uh, increase the possibility of uh, surveillance, mostly control and surveillance and like um, to record people, to record like meetings and also like to prevent uh, what they call like violent protesters to go to protest. So this, all this were changed quite a lot after 2015 and how it up happened exactly like uh, from the beginning of the year, things didn't change so fast. It means after the Charlie Hebdo attack, it was not like immediately like state of emergency. It was only at the end of the year after the second attacks. But already they were like trying to implement new laws from the beginning. And mostly it was more uh, an opinion struggle, a communication struggle from the state, like to make people accept the necessity of implementing new uh, anti-terrorist laws. And actually, the attacks at the end of the year in uh, November uh, were helping them to implement these laws because from the first day, the 13th of November, it's the, the same day the terrorists were attacking the Bataclan, they took, uh, they implemented this uh, state of emergency law. And uh, directly in the two weeks after, they had the possibility like to put people on the house arrest. And uh, they put actually around 800 people on the house arrest, mostly uh, Muslim people, but not only. They put also on house arrest, uh, on the house arrest, like 25, 24, exactly, let's say, anarchist activists who were mostly presented in the press as uh, ecologists because it was in the frame of the summit, COP21, climate change summit that took place in Paris. So it was a good opportunity after the attacks to, to use the state of emergency to prevent the left groups to organize any uh, movement, any actions against the, the summit. And in this, in this frame, they organized like uh, house, house searches and uh, house arrests. And uh, I was from I was from these twenty four people who were uh, on the house arrest in this time, and it was not for a long time. It was just for me. It was mostly a message sent to the anarchist movements and to the left movements to say like we have you under control, like and we we consider you 
uh, we always considered you as a like a terrorist uh, potential terrorist uh, risk and uh, we uh, we keep you under control under surveillance because this house arrest measure was only for 16 days for us like uh, 24 anarchists it was like uh, only during the while the, the time of the contest summit but we were in exactly the same situation as uh, the let's say more than 700 muslims in the same uh, period so it means we had to uh, stay at home the whole day we had to sign like th th uh, three times a day at the police station and we couldn't go out from uh, an seven in the uh, evening until six in the morning so this was the most like measure they took against us and it was a way like to implement and to experiment some uh, measures that would be uh, applied and implemented in the next month and that would give much more possibilities to the to the police like to survey our movements and our groups and um, how can I like explain what happened after it's very like it's a very tense period so there is a lot of things that happen in this period and they also begin in this moment to um, experiment uh, the whole, all the ways to prevent people from going to protest by uh, forbidding the protest or for banning people from going to protest. So this was, uh, and especially in 2016, we had this huge uh, social movement against the labor law reform. And uh, that begins in, in March 2016. And it was still the state of emergency because the state of emergency uh, stayed in, uh, until uh, 2017, if I remember. So at something like two years. And uh, during this period, like the police were very, really able to uh, experiment a lot of things. And um, during this uh, movement, the social, uh, social struggle in 2016, they send a lot of uh, protest ban to people. It means they took the list from the intelligence service and uh, on this list, like we were like, uh, we don't know exactly how much anarchists are on this list, but we know that uh, mostly uh, in this period we had like, uh, it was well known that uh, between 20,000 and 30,000 people were registered on the list called uh, of people called Fiche S, it means who are uh, representing a threat for the state, for the security of the state. And in this uh, 20 to 30,000 people, you have uh, a mix between uh, far right activists, far left activists and uh, so-called Islamists. And they took like uh, from this list, they were, we are like most of the, let's say, ultra left people and anarchists are on this blacklist. And on the based on this list, they just sent cops many times to 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 home, uh, to the people's address uh, with the papers saying that they have not the right to go out uh, in certain places and certain time, uh, mostly during um, big protests or big events. For example, I was prevented to go out when the presidential election took place in, uh, in Paris. I couldn't go out. I couldn't go in many places in Paris. I was banned from many zones because, uh, because of this election, because allegedly I was uh, representing a threat for the state. So all these measures that were like implemented during the state of emergency and at the end of the uh, state of emergency, it means like in uh, 2017, uh, between 2016 and 17, they uh, did everything in the parliament to adopt laws, new laws that would give the same possibilities out of the state of emergency. For example, banning people from protest or uh, putting people under house arrest, uh, many uh, um, like measures like this would be usable. I don't know how to say it, but uh, could be used like even after the end of the state of emergency. And actually this uh, very tense period uh, where every day and every month we had a lot of like uh, a lot of a lot of topic in the news about like uh, mostly about terrorism threat unrest and uh, and uh, a bit also began like we began to speak more about police brutality at the end of uh, at this after the summer 2016 in this period the police became very like aggressive uh, and the trade union, the police trade union, became very active to uh, ask to the to put pressure on the government, on the French government, to get more and more means, and not only for surveillance and control, but also guns, like really, uh, like more uh, rubber bullets, more 
more grenades and uh, more means for public order, more cars, new cars, and a lot of possibilities like to implement the police, uh, the state violence. So this was the situation of the state of emergency uh, between 2015 and 2017. And with this laws that are like kind of extraordinary, I think, for quite a big part of the society, was there any resistance against the state of emergency or it was happening in the terms of like a bigger social movements that were actually fighting for the certain causes and parallel to that actually resisting to the state of emergency? Uh, so in the frame of this uh, movement in 2016 against the labor law reform, like a lot of uh, um, a lot of movements and groups, and not only anarchists, were like um, putting in the front, of, like in the front uh, line, the um, the slogans and uh, like um, like against like the authoritarian state, against emergency uh, state, and against like these uh, security laws, but. In my opinion, like the resistance uh, to the state of emergency and this anti-terrorism is very, was and is still today very low, very, very weak. We are not like well organized, like to struggle specifically against, uh, against this. After we will speak about later, because on the specific topic about on police brutality, many, cha many things changed uh, in the years after. But on this specific topic of the state of emergency, for me, there is a big fail. Uh, there were a big fail from our movement because we were not able to put our vindication, our like uh, critique of this uh, state of emergency in the first line. And uh, we were much more focused on, uh, let's say like, as always, like uh, the French movement, they are like the professional of unrest, you know, in the street of street fighting. but. Uh, when it's about organizing like huge campaigns and movements against something specific like a state of emergency we are not so well organized so this would be my main critic about this uh, period because now we are paying for what we didn't uh, organize in this period Malikosekin Makome Amin Oulamin Autant d'hommes noirs ou arabes que la police assassine Le savais-tu Entre 1977 et 2019, c'est 676 personnes que la police tue. Derrière ces chiffres, il y a la réalité des vies volées. Des familles détruites. D'une soif de justice qui peine à être étanchée. Car dans l'immense majorité des cas, les meurtriers ne seront pas inquiétés. Ils continueront à exercer en toute impunité. Servir et protéger Non. non. Sévir et oppresser. Tabasser les classes populaires et les personnes racisées. Tel est en vérité le cœur du métier de policier. Maintenir coûte que coûte l'ordre social raciste et bourgeois Il n'y a pas de doute, la police est faite pour ça. À ceux qui s'indignent et demandent « mais que fait la police ?» Nous répondons « 18 morts par an, qui osent encore parler de bavure et mentir aux parents ?» Quand ça fait 40 ans que ça dure, l'exception à l'état de droit, l'oppression à l'état pur, 13-12, c'est nous, ça veut dire que tous les keufs sont des raclures, passe droit systématique, qu'un problème est structurel, la police prend sous serment, la justice est sous tutelle, l'institution par définition est par nature cruelle, la police tue à tue-tête et en plus elle fait du zèle. Une fois n'est pas coutume. Sans fois c'est l'habitude, l'assitude, l'impunité nous rend taciturne Amertume, l'état que j'en si t'as pas de fortune Ah clap dans la tribune, dis la au coin de ma rue Flash pole sous nos figures, manif et point de Massif sont les bavures, injustice en couverture Steve Zig et des boulades sont pas des procédures Rémi, c'est vrai qu'il y a ta main, la police tue La police, la police tue, tue ce n'est plus un secret pour personne Depuis que les images circulent à travers tablettes et smartphones Pourtant ça fait un bail, ah ouais mon dieu Depuis le temps que la vraie raquette Il se cache derrière des non-lieux Excusez-moi du peu mais je ne fais qu'exposer les faits Qui foutent le feu dans mes artères avant d'exploser les veines Je dédie ces quelques vers aux familles des victimes Lâche un gros glaire sans ces keufs qui jouent les vies qui... yeah, Devant une personne âgée ou un gamin de la tête Regarde il propage la guerre en tant gardien de la paix On écrit gras tu voudrais qu'on police nos verts Le caractère de la police influe sur notre police de caractère Tu dis qu'il n'y a pas que des garipons parmi tous ces types Mais le bon flic a frappé je 
jeune pied va-t-il pousser Steve Nick dans Paris sous les tirs, ils ont fait nous des quilles Encore pire quand tu t'appelles Naïm, mal et coups c'est qui Le plus souvent, noir ou arabe de cité Dépité par les juges, leur cécité répétée S'organiser pour la vérité nécessité Des campagnes au quartier confiné cité Des terres alors prends la rue et crie bien fort Anticapitaliste, antifa, antiport Ensemble on peut conjurer le mauvais sort Du pays du dedans à celui du dehors yeah. Je sais que nos proies bras, tu kiffes nos proies, que ça peut briser nos blocs, remixer le 17 octobre, viser le programme, le ostracisme est colossal, police, milice, un autre raciste et colonial, je parle de rôle social, peu importe qui en était gentil, l'État les fera tirer pour protéger les nantis, plus les fera quitter, j'espère transformer les flics, ma naïveté m'a quitté près d'un transfo électrique. Rien ne se perd, tout se transforme, donc leur violence deviendront des projectiles qu'on lance, fort sur leur uniforme, unique forme de réponse, tant que la justice les soutiendra. Et on se souviendra du bruit du port lorsque le schtroumpf viendra On trouve plein de en bleu qui kiffe se défouler sur les frères Quand tout pètera c'est le shérif qui sera bouffé par les verres Je veux pas que mes petits poussent là où les schmitts prennent pour des G.I. Une pensée aux victimes coups 13 12 N au DJA Cours, cours, et les ont dégainés les LVD A chaque manif j'ai la boule au ventre et un air effrayé Force aux mutilés, combien qu'on accable Pour s'être mutiné auprès du capitaine à câble a tous les anonymes, tous ceux qu'on connaît pas, y'a pas de place au débat Alors ne vous étonnez pas si les cocktails et les pavés nous servent de sentence Car quand la justice n'est plus, il ne reste que la vengeance On parle plus de faits isolés mais bien d'histoire de France J'en ai noirci des pages depuis ma première marche blanche Il y a déjà 20 ans à Lille, un triste mois d'avril D'une balle dans la nuque, un brigadier du riz, Adam là oui Encore un jeune buté gratis, un flic muté à Nice Une justice complaisante, toute une ville brûlée à vif Tu réalises qu'en vérité l'histoire ne fait que bégayer Qu'il faut encore batailler pour voir leur machine s'enrayer C'est l'air qui combattre les élites Leur CID et ceux que nous nos mangent tard Aucune bavure C'est que des crimes dont ces raclures sont responsables Démocrature, violence systémique Chez les Schmitt comme des bourreaux de longue date Au oh mic je suis abrupt, intrépide Et le foie de mes ennemis c'est le fourreau de mon sable Alors quand ils m'ont les embrasse le respire, ce qu'on demande c'est d'avoir une police sans armes Fais le mot que j'ai griffonné dans le sable Putain digne, sans cesse contrôlé par un flic qui connaît ton blast Pas de ceux qui rigolent des temps graves, les sœurs et les frères en ont marre L'état se radicalise donc obligé de mener la guerre à notre sar Bien sûr que je rêve d'autre part, mais pour l'heure je reste à la ville Trop d'amis s'y sont marqués par la vie, les aider le rôle que je donne à mon art il ne protège pas le peuple mais l'économie Gère les décis comme dans les colonies Formé au racisme, à la xénophobie Tu cherches des bons coeurs, mate la rubrique nécrologie Et rien à foutre si mes écrits choquent Un, Ils nous aiment pas mais c'est réciproque On n'a pas attendu Snapchat et Periscope Pour savoir qui est à l'origine de toutes les discords Je le bruit des balles mortelles, le pas des bottes La chasse à l'homme dans les barrios, les petits ramassés par les ports Les sauvageries de la BAC, les poucaves, les villes ici Les jeunes qui tu es prennent la femme pour faire le ménage sous leur tapis Tu t'entendras tous les mensonges dans les musiques, les conneries dans le JT Le confort des nantis, les charters affrétés L'histoire dira que c'est pour la paix, le fond la France des colonies Au fond ça tape la garde à vue, la zone c'est ça, tu le gardes à vie Je ben tout si je suis un matou coumé Je suis là pour dénoncer les meurtres que la police commet Les crimes que la justice omet que veux-tu faire quand le racisme a un uniforme bleu Qu'il souffle sur les braises pendant que les miens ne cessent de crier au feu Pour un délit de sale gueule tu pourrais te faire fumer Garde le sang froid quand un poulet cherche à te déplumer Et pour nos morts on ne cessera de pousser des cris d'indignation Face au silence de ce pouvoir qui ne fait crapiver les tensions Ce serait trop facile de crier Mais tout le monde aime la facilité Major en l'air balance des phoques quitte à s'en mordre les doigts Pas de solution, pas de justice, reste la fatalité Dans un combat où même l'estropié ne baissera pas les bras La violence par la violence, la responsabilité Ouais. Reste en amant, sabre de guerre et la paix reste à l'écart ouais, Et si le savoir est une arme, ils sont pas tous calibrés non, non. Ou quand les forces de l'ordre deviennent la faiblesse de l'État les esquiveurs, mais peut-être bien que c'est ce qu'ils veulent Sont plus que des bêtes videurs dans cet univers qui meurt Tous ces êtres si moches, tous à protéger leurs maîtres qui sonnent Le glaciairement dans des conquêtes ignobles Ils aiment la violence, ils sont devenus pages Toujours une explication parle de son bon usage tu finis en sang même s'il est venu sage Ces enculés voient les manifs comme un bonus d'âge On tire les cols, les cierges, la garde mobile D'autres les appellent, les poules à gars, les keufs, les roussins ou civils On prend les armes, le monopole de la violence légitime On prend les larmes de ceux qui restent Hommage aux proches et familles de victimes On les déteste sans distinction aucune La police viole, l'assassiné, mutile La justice est complice car elle a qui en prime N'attendez pas qu'on se taise car les dossiers s'empilent Et que les futurs bâtards s'empressent Par exercer dans cette école du crime La police tue 
C'est pas le sujet que les infos diffusent C'est la folie pure Cherche une autre issue Mesure d'étranglement Les noirs ou arabes en France Et vivent dangereusement Contrôle de routine Personne pour secourir Comment dire à un proche Qu'on a peur pour lui Bande de cœur pourri Bande de meurtriers J'éviterai les insultes Pourtant le cœur y est Parce qu'il s'avère servir les villes C'est faut qu'ils me servir Ils rendent service à l'élite Et c'est qui sont le peuple Parce qu'ils peuvent tuer impunément Ils sont si fiers d'eux On devrait presque les remercier De se faire palper les yeux du plus haut grade jusqu'au trou de balle en poitrouille Tellement vite de vie, même les darons en ont la trouille Ne manque jamais l'audace de leur rappeler à chaque tard d'or Tous les flics ne sont que des traîtres qui j'en bave de rage Je suis grillé comme la Gaule dans un survêt loto Ou pire que ça comme de Gaulle dans mon pays le Congo Ils jouent les Robocop, j'y ai goûté très tôt Tazer flash buzz pour national course poursuite dans le ghetto Ça me rappelle l'époque de Georgia oh my man J'écris à l'eau Marianne ce linge charge y en a marre Vos étoiles sont trop fans Il ne tient pas que j'en dame la seule police qu'on aime, c'est celle de Sting Rock Des nombreux de psychopathes sur des gilets par balles Des brutes épaisses pour protéger le capital J'ai vu la peur comme outil politique fondamental On assassine aussi bien avec des armes non létales Avec un lanceur de balles, on ne fait pas dans la dentelle Et les bavures ne sont jamais vraiment accidentelles Au ministère comme à l'antenne, mensonge en permanence Dans ses regards, ses silences, la police et la violence Lamy, je crois que c'est dans l'air, la violence faut que t'encaisses quand dans les magnifiques quartiers la police sera même et rapidement créer l'enfer Les victimes on les enterre Mais qui ose nier le racisme alors que pour eux un meurtre est un traitement exemplaire Shoot les drones que l'on voit se pavaner dans le ciel Tellement d'étoiles dans les yeux quand on voit que des gens se lèvent Dis-toi que les concessions on n'est pas prêt d'en faire faut changer la police, c'est pas dans le trait J'attends le test terme, le prochain que son mental complexe Qui verra les images, il me dira qu'il attend le contexte Pitié, donnez pas d'armes à des mecs pourrés Si tu vois un noir courir, c'est que c'est la mer courée Parce que si tu n'as pas la gueule à ma colle et que le jean Ton meurtre par un bleu zélé sera pas reconnu comme crime Payer des impôts pour se faire shooter, je suis confus Imagine, j'ai l'impression de payer l'état pour qu'on me fume Qui parle encore de bavure D'accident ou de maladresse, ils font juste leur boulot La note s'aggrave et j'en vois trop peu qui passe à la caisse J'allume un peu de feuille à chaque 13 décembre La rime perce défense, ça sera peut-être moi le prochain à me faire descendre Et fais pas le commis Marsta, pas pour les maudits pariables Le marine est rouchant dans tous les commissariats Est-ce que tu sais comment c'est pas train de procès Les meurtriers sont décorés comme des sapins de Noël J'ai pas vu la justice sous leur sapin de Noël Mais la haine qu'on suscite quand on atteint nos rêves des serres les molaires, faut qu'ils prennent des molas Pour plumer la vola et je ferai du bénévolat Et c'est plus grave, je connais le prix d'une larme Combien au prix du grade et combien au tribunal Non je simule pas, ma haine est immuable Mon âme est bien plus clean même si j'ai la figure sale Faciès ou trajant versus monsieur l'agent Race sera la proie, elle bronze et a toujours bon foie Sous leur poids tu meurs lentement, tes plis étranglement Chasse à court tu seras cobaye, par choqué par la flicaille Il avait 20 printemps, voulait voir la mer Dit tu es grand pour le faire taire, la prison l'enterre Pas de justice mais toujours suspect, victime sera le criminel On reconnaît bien la griffe du colon sous le Leur méthode est coloniale, le contrôle est racial Ma t'es l'indigène, le sauvage, l'animal Chaque jour il te rappelle qu'ici c'est pas ton bled Que ta couleur est trop laide, que ta présence les obsède et tu risques la hogra à chaque fois que tu leur tiens tête Tu risques un tribunal à chaque fois que t'écris un texte Tellement ils nous oppressent, tellement je me répète Tellement ils nous agressent, tellement je les déteste Et répétez, 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 ça use 13 12 minutes de plus pour vous traiter Ça fait pas de mal, nous on n'a pas de pare-balles Ni les moyens de la juge pour enquêter Pour enquêter qui vous raquettez, des noirs et des arabes et quelques plans bien endettés. Mandat de dépôt chez les suppôts de Le Pen, générateur de peine et d'anxiété. J'entends des all life matter, putain tu es pas. Bien sûr toutes les vies comptent en fait, c'est même pas un débat. C'est pas dans quel état ça me laisse. Les choses ne peuvent pas changer si tu restes dans ton color blindness. Pourquoi tu fixes mon doigt quand je pointe de la lune Tu capteras peut-être plus vite avec un genou sur la nuque. T'entends racisme à toutes les sauces et ça dégouline dans ton fil. T'es fatigué d'en entendre parler. Imagine ceux qui le vivent. Hey. Tu sors chez toi, les keufs te contrôlent à tort et à travers. Tout ça pourquoi Pour un simple regard de travers de port. Tu te retrouves au poste, là tu dis que c'est pas qu'un cliché Tout ce que les rappeurs racontent sur les flics Police, racisme et politique, vaste communicant La prochaine pavure, tu crois que ça va se terminer comment 
comme un pic, je suis pas né du dernier des camps Pour moi le préfet l'allemand c'est juste le premier des cons Les directives viennent d'en haut d'une autre caste Tombe en cascade sur les képis et les casques Forcé à encastrer les leurs sans trop de questions Les dirigeants cassent La pression précède à l'oppression La sanction dans les deux camps c'est ça l'idée Changer les termes, changer les mentalités Le peuple doute de sa sécurité alors qu'il la paie Les forces de l'ordre ont remplacé les gardiens de la paix Peut-on pardonner à un flic Peut-on pardonner le racisme, les violences gratuites et qu'on qu nous a donné Devrions-nous ne pas pleurer les victimes Accepter le cynisme, fermer les yeux comme ceux qui nous dirigent La police assassine, étrangle les propres cibles Les mêmes minorités que fils des discours politiques Y'a pas d'hasard qui tiennent ces volontaires et codifiés La violence légitime n'existe que pour dominer Eh hey, Darmanin, check bien ton reflet dans les flaques de piste de ta vie chien Plus ce monde t'a échoué par un trou de balle T'es qu'un frotteur de bus, un pointeur de plus On te fera glisser le ton factus et dans les amygdales Le feu dans les bleus, les yeux dans les yeux Cible des trottinettes, c'est parce que la rue rejette le non-lieu La banlieue au milieu, no go zone commando Rate des villes et radicaux, El Pueblo Unido Déboulonne le comico, 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 comico. So jumping to these days, I think all around the world, Corona was coronavirus was used as one of the ways to extend the police authority and actually change a role of police inside of the society from this kind of fighting the crime, basically to shaping the society into the certain norms and to the certain activities that are allowed or forbidden or whatever. How is it right now in France? Do the general population face more pressure from the police forces around the country on the streets? Like, do people have more kind of a daily, you know, conflicts with the cops? Are people getting punished with fines or short term arrests or they're getting surveilled and getting fines from this surveillance? Are there new possibilities for surveillance that were given to the cops in order to fight COVID, COVID epidemics like in other countries with face recognition or basically like automating surveillance through the smartphones and stuff like that? Yeah, in fact, in fact, the pressure against the uh, biggest, uh, bigger part of the population of the people is, uh, is, uh, is a fact. Like uh, since with the yellow vest movement and this, uh, and this uh, pandemic, many things changed actually. And what one thing that changed a lot actually is the conscious consciousness the people have about uh, what uh, means police, uh, police and state violence. And this is mostly the Yellow Vest movement changed a lot the minds of the people. It meant a big part of the, what was very interesting in this movement. It was a movement that was like uh, leaded by by mostly people from the ground and people from the countryside that were not involved in political movement before. So a huge part of the people who are not involved in political struggles uh, became suddenly aware about many things we were trying to make them aware before from our activist point of view. And so you have a lot of people who got involved in political movement from this period, even if they didn't want. There is a lot of yellow vests, for example, who told that they are apolitical, that they are they don't want, they are not left, they are not right, they are not from any political side. And in fact, they became political activists because, because of this movement, because the way the government answered to this movement. And uh, because they were like harshly repressed, like uh, if I can like give some uh, some uh, some numbers, it's like uh, amazing because uh, was it like there were something like uh, eleven thousand people uh, were sent in cu into custody, and from this uh, eleven thousand people, more than three thousand were sentenced in uh, in tribunal. So it's three thousand people who were mostly non -act not activists, not people who were like uh, used to protest before, and uh, and many of them, like a third of these three thousand, so around thousand people were sent uh, to prison, like to real to prison, and. Um, And it's still going on. It means there is ju judicial investigation are going on, like more than 150 investigation are still going on. And there is like, and they, they try still today to find people 
uh, they are like uh, studying since uh, two years now. They are studying and uh, analyzing the videos, the hundreds of videos from every protest in every city to find out who were like doing what. So it's continuing. And uh, and this uh, this made people much more conscious. And after came like the COVID, the pandemic, COVID, uh, the, the pandemic. And this pandemic changed also many things because people were like uh, forced to stay like during the first cur curfew in uh, March and April uh, last year, like people were like uh, forced to stay at home. And uh, we had all like to uh, provide like a paper when you want to go out to go to the shop or anyway, you had to, you had to prove and to give a reason, a purpose for going out. And many, many, many people were just randomly fined and arrested and the fine is something like 135 euro if you don't have like a uh, this paper or if you have not the purpose to be out they uh, and they distributed they spread a lot of fine to any people so it was not like uh, focused or targeting some specific people as, as it was before because we have an experience of friends about like uh, a specific target for the police and toward uh, activists, protesters, and uh, youth from the suburbs, foreigners. And uh, with this Yellow Vest movement and this pandemic, a lot of people were just repressed, not being in this category of people we had uh, that were re repressed, confronted to repression before. And so from this side, like from uh, this point of view, like the people became much more aware and much more angry, angry. And because now we, you can say that many people have an experience in their own, own relationships, in their own families, they have a, uh, an experience of repression. Mostly a lot, a, a big, uh, big amount of people have, a, a, uh, and they like understood that it's like this, the hegemony of violence is uh, on the side of the state and not on the side of the people. And what else? And in this period, like this COVID pandemic gave, there is two things. The Yellow Vest movement gave the possibility mo mainly to the police to experiment the protests, uh, forbidding the protests. So they forbid a lot of protests. It was really a, a measure used against the Yellow Vest movement saying this protest is forbidden. Any people who will be like controlled and catched going to this protest for any reason, sometimes and many times just because they had this yellow vest in their bag, even not on their uh, on themselves, like not wearing it, but having in the bag, it was already a purpose to be fined. So many, many, many people, even people who were nothing, to, who had nothing to do with the Yellow Vest movement, but who were suspected to go to the protest, got some fine of 135 euro. And so this uh, this first phase of uh, protesting uh, of uh, like just putting pressure on the people uh, randomly, and after the COVID pandemic, it was like the same thing. Like many people who are in the street for any reason, they were suspected by the police. And this is the new way, like the real new way, the French government is dealing with people, suspect suspecting anyone, and this make the people really crazy because because. People understand that just the whole system of police is like suspecting anyone. And uh, and now they are even like passing laws to uh, improve and to implement and to increase the possibility of suspecting anyone by creating new files, uh, new data sheets and data files to register all the people who were uh, suspected or who were like at some moment controlled by police in uh, in a situation that he shouldn't be like. I don't know how to explain it. Like uh, many people will be like just categorized as suspect because they were controlled one time or they had a fine one time. So it's already enough to be suspected for the following uh, of your life. Like, And this is, uh, this is how the government is dealing with people in a very harsh way. This crisis, a social crisis, and like the health uh, issue crisis, the COVID crisis, gave the possibility to government to, uh, to, to have justification to implement new things like the face tracking uh, and uh, using like all the means of the technology to, uh, to guarantee public order and to forbid people to, uh, I mean, to prevent I don't know, to prevent any uh, outlaw uh, behavior, let's say. Right. Uh, but I mean, the, the point here is, as I understand, that the state is trying to criminalize like a bigger groups of people or put them into the risk, risk groups, so to say, to categorize. Yeah. And for 
this is this is i think also part of the whole moving to preventive policing um ideas yeah. which are quite big in canada and us where you can basically like give points and you can see if this person acted suspiciously at some point he will be not a green dot on the map but rather a yellow and so on and so forth and i think they're doing that actually in many countries around the, uh, around europe uh, right now not talking about like I don't yeah. know Russia or China, where this is already like partly implemented. You yeah, just... and this is why the, this is how they use like this kind of crisis to create some uh, data sheets and some uh, using and to use some technologies to uh, put everyone under control, so they can like uh, decide who is good and who is bad. Like, uh, and this is something is very huge now. And the the new law in France, but we'll speak about uh, just after the new law of uh, like uh, global security law. They just implemented. They are voting right now. That means it's 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 being to be voted uh, while I'm speaking with you. Uh, this new law is uh, is giving uh, is especially like focused on uh, this new technology, like the camera, the face tracking, the data sheets, and the possibility for municipality police who are not not involved in public order before, not in uh, crowd control and anything. These municipality police, they give, they get access with this law to uh, judicial possibilities. They can act now like the national police, and they can like investigate, and they can have access to uh, to the files. And this is actually the big goal of the Ministry of Interior of this government is to uh, to transform the uh, biggest part of the population of the people in uh, in in uh, in policemen. Like uh, they want. What was a big scandal, for example, for one year, it was during the Yellow Vest movement, is that they want to, uh, they signed, actually, they just, it's not that they, 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 it's not just that they want, they did it, they signed an agreement that some prefecture, it means like the police department of any department can sign an agreement with the hunters so that the hunters collaborate with the police uh, to uh, control, control and survey countryside. And this was in during the Yellow Vest movement. This was a mean like to put more policing inside the countryside because they have only the gendarmes and they have not so much people who are involved in uh, public order and control in the countryside. So they will use a part of the population who are not cops mostly. So the security agents, uh, the security agents, like and uh, the the hunters and uh, the firemen and the policemen. And the municipality police who are like mostly involved in uh, what we call tranquillité publique. It means uh, quietness and dirtiness in the streets. Uh, like some, uh, it's like the good cop, let's say. Uh, they made uh, out of them like now uh, the same at the national, with the same possibilities as the national cops. This is crazy, but I think this kind of like finding snitches within the society is happening again really vivid with the COVID, because as I see it also here in Germany, they are encouraging people to report their neighbors. And yeah. I had like several situations where friends were reported by the cops, uh, by the, by the cops, huh? by the cops in the heads of the people, right? <laughs> they were reported by the people for, for example, having like a collective workout meeting. session. No, not even mm -hmm. like a meeting, just, just like going outside and, and mm -hmm. having like a couple of jumps, couple of push-ups, and so on and so forth. And this was already in the hands of the people like, what the fuck? This mm -hmm. is like not an order. Yeah. So I think like this is going crazier and crazier. And I think with this new law, as I remember, um, as I've seen it in the news, uh, the, the, one of the biggest parts was banning filming of the police on the on the protests and you mentioned that there is they're trying to apply also surveillance to the whole story was there any effect um on on the society eventually as the law was discussed i've seen that there were protests i've seen that there were riots but um, as i understand right now everything calmed down did they change certain parts in the law um after the riots or everything went as it is and it looks like the law will be passed no, actually, the problem is that it was very strong from the beginning, and there were like a big fail from the beginning to uh, organize like protests against this, because actually the main focus was the uh, what they call like the uh, 24 article, the article uh, 24, that is focused on yeah, this is the this topic about filming the police and making this uh, forbidden. 
to film uh, to film to record the police but the problem is that the beginning of this movement was uh, so say why you heard so much about it abroad it's because the whole journalist the whole journalist uh, redactions and uh, media were involved in criticizing this law because they found that for them it was a threat to the liberty of the press to the freedom of the press and that's why they were mostly involved and there were a big focus on this specific article because it was concerning directly like the journalist and after the yellow vest movement uh, in which like uh, the press was very very focused on police brutality filming and making investigation a 3d investigation and and video investigation about the police brutality this law is just an answer to stop this movement this social this uh, civil movement to denounce police brutality in the society and they they tried the government just tried prevent anyone to film the police the problem is that they were very like fine and smart because they put in the law like they wanted to they tried to prevent anyone even the journalist so the first reaction was the reaction of the press of the journalist and they led the movement in a very uh, very strong uh, way and uh, the first month like in november Uh, mostly like the journal the community of the press like uh, were like involved in this what it, i said it's it was a fail because we were everyone was so focused on the uh, article 24 that they forgot that all the other art articles are just a nightmare it's a nightmare it's like a lot of measures very high security measures uh, worse than everything we had before I told about the municipality police but there's also like the use of unmanned uh, vehicles there is the the, uh, the generalization the globalization of the use of this uh, police camera and um, what else there's even more like possibilities also they again they speak uh, they give more possibilities to the police to be protected by the one article of the law like that give them um, I don't know how to say when they shoot someone there is much more possibilities now to say that it was self defense for them and these are you have a lot of things in this law that are very awful and everyone was focused on this 24 and so the government at some point they decided to uh, to calm down the pressure of the media because all the media were involved in the struggle like making a lot of articles about against the government and they calmed down the pressure uh, by changing this article and this is how they uh, they get out the journalist from this article they say you are not concerned only the usual people who are not like a press card and uh, but in fact it came down at this moment and it's come down also because there were a big like disagreement between the let's say the liberal left and the radicals because the radicals and the the more uh, involved like people they were asking the to delay the whole law like to, not uh, to uh, they were against the whole law and uh, the liberals were leading the movement they were in, uh, they were focused only on the 24 and when the government changed this it became like many like uh, many groups and many political uh, groups they went out of the of the the union against this uh, law so we had some yeah there were some riots like in january for example and uh, end of december in january there were some riots but uh, there is a, a big division between people uh, around this law because uh, everyone is only focused on what is interesting uh, interesting him and uh, and finally like the law are, is voted like without uh, so much pressure and because of the covid also and the measures like many people uh, it's very hard to organize protests because they are all forbidden the police is everywhere in front uh, before the protest and they are very proactive as you said before like since the state of emergency the police is really much more proactive so they have a, they they experiment every day more and they inc increase every day more their possibilities to prevent people from going to protest and actually in this law also it's now forbidden for anyone to to buy detain and use uh, pyrotechnics so any any firecrackers are forbidden now by this law and uh, so it's now if you go to a protest and you have just uh, gloves pyrotechnic or anything in your bag it's a big risk like to be arrested and uh, this made people calm down a lot especially after the yellow vest movement were so repressed like 
with uh, thousands of uh, custody, but also thousands of uh, people in injured. We have some, some something like three thousand people who were like uh, injured, and it's it's only the, the the cases we could record. So it means that, like for me, it's much more people were injured. In fact, hey everybody, my name's Eamon, and I'm the host of a show on the Channel Zero Network called Radical People. And wouldn't you know it, we're going into the third season. It's a monthly show, so it's really not hard to get extra seasons. But anyway, basically, it's a show in which I interview people who are involved in direct action or direct action campaigns, past or present, and we hear their great stories. Anyway, it's on the Channel Zero Network, it's on iTunes, and I'm sure at this point you know how to find a podcast. Radical people. Check it out. I think listening to you about this new law, partly at least for me, it is about extending the police possibilities and extending the police presence in the society but at the same time decreasing the transparency of the police work like trying to avoid any type of control from any type of branches of the society that are not part of the ruling government to actually prevent any transparency um, as i know you are one of the people who are actually gathering information on police activity like what they're doing yeah. their equipment and so on and doing some talks as well can you describe a bit the resistance against transparency from a police side i mean the cops for sure are you know like pushing people away with the cameras but in a more like systematic way and did you experience any problems for yourself trying to do this work like trying to research the police trying to tell the people what the police are doing what is the police violence and so on and so forth yeah there is two uh two level of resistance resistance from the side of the police against all this surveillance and this possibility for people to to witness their brutality is uh, there is like actually in france there is a, a police union which is very strong on one side, and it's putting a huge pressure on uh, governments, on any governments, and uh, and on the society. And uh, and they ask uh, systematically every year. They put a big pressure, and sometimes they go in the street without any like uh, authorization, and uh, they put pressure, and they get everything what they want: more money, more means, more cars, and more guns. And uh, also. Every time they ask for some specific change in the law, for example, in the two last years, they got like a, a law guaranteeing. So they have the guarantee now in the law by law that their anonymity is uh, preserved. It means when they open a case, when they investigate on someone in the case, it's not written anymore uh, their name and uh, family name. Also, they got the right to wear, and they got actually the materials, they got to wear the balaclava, how do you call it, like to hide the face. So for one year, they got like 80,000 balaclava, so they, they can hide their face, uh, like totally legally, so they don't... Uh, and, um, and they are always like uh, hiding their numbers, it means like... They are supposed to show the numbers, but no any control is done so that they can just hide them or just don't put them. And uh, there is no any, uh, never no any sanction or action against policemen if they don't wear this number. It's not like in England, for example, where they have to give the number all the time and the name and everything. Uh, in France, like you will never know their name. You will not see their face anymore. And all this it's because like the police unions are very strong in France. It's a real mafia. And on the other side, there is the direct pressure on the protesters, on the people in the streets. It means now, and they have this law also with this uh, security law, for example, they will have the mean to punch in the face any person, any people uh, filming in the street, filming them in the street. Before, there were always a controversy. Sometimes there are cops that they got some sanction because they, they punched someone uh, who was filming or destroyed the camera and so on. But now they have like a legal purpose um, to prosecute, like to persecute, to, yeah, to punch people, actually. And um, in, my, uh, in my experience, yeah, we have a lot of, uh, we have, and especially because involved we are involved in the struggle and that's why we are like uh, we are mostly saying to people try to film so it's very controversial because in some protests we are mostly say it's better not to film because it's not helping in the in the court hearing if you are we have many cases where people were injured there is some videos and it's not it's not especially useful 
in the specific uh, case of uh, protest, it's very good to film the police in uh, when they make intervention in neighborhoods like out of uh, crowd control. Uh, so we promote this. We say like in the neighborhoods, in the banlieue, uh, you should film when something happens, when the police come, just film them and harass them with uh, filming. But not in the protest because it's dangerous for, pe for people and we should like stop filming all the time in protest. And it's not helping actually. It's not helping in the pro uh, because they have, the law is already like uh, well done to protect the violent policemen uh, in this case. So there's no need, it's not helping so much to film. And even more, it's putting you in danger now with the new law, but not only with the new law, but because also the police, they are, they have a huge system of impunity so that now they can like just punch people without being prosecuted or uh, they, they, are, they are living in total impunity now in France. So there is many cases where people are just uh, punched. Uh, I was also, when I'm filming, uh, it's, it's always like, it's a big risk actually. And what I did in the end of 2018, I made a movie like on the Champs-Élysées during the Yellow Vest movement, going very close to the policemen in front of their face and filming, asking very annoying questions. I think today I would not do the same already. It's only two years ago, but now I would not do this because I think that today they would just like destroy my face if I do this. And this is a fact. This is a fact that changed in two, two three years. Like the situation changed so fast that uh, now the policemen are much more violent, much more, much more aggressive, and they have much more possibilities to be aggressive without being prosecuted and without being like, without provoking any scandal even. Because we are not you, we are now uh, used to this everyday violence of the police, especially during the COVID time. It's like I don't know. It's like I have the feeling that I'm speaking about Belarus, but uh, Belarus. Oh Belarus. no, no! Don't don't worry. <laughs> like you're not yet. Belarusian cops also have balaclavas, but they're allowed. I mean, they are also anonymized in the in the cases. They are also anonymized in the court. So this is the next step where the cops yeah. in balaclavas are entering the courts and you just don't have any transparency at all. Like even the witnesses are hidden behind balaclava. I mean, there are pictures of the cops that are dressed like a completely like a black block. So they, they don't wear any identification. You can't see their mouth. You can't see their eyes. You can't see anything. They wear like the, the skiing glasses and this is in the court. They're sitting in the court, they're giving testimonies and they're sitting like that. So they're prepared for the space. So there is still um, going on. But I think like this is also really crazy to hear because there is also like this notion for a lot of people from the East that, you know, in the West, the cops are like this polite, uh, crazy, I don't know, actors who can come to you and ask you if you want to have an ice cream and everything is fine. And listening to that, it, it's also making like a lot of mm. disturbing thoughts, at least for me. Listening to you, I can hear that police has quite a lot of political force in France. As you said, like this huge uh, police union, also um, certain politicians. I remember that Sarkozy was a minister of internal affairs first before before became uh, becoming president. So there is also a lot of politicians who are um, pressing towards um, getting more authority for the police. But is there like other side of the story with like so much violence after the yellow vest movement with so much pressure on the society right now during the COVID, so much pressure on the society during the state of emergency is there some kind of a critical mass forming up to uh, fight for starting from some kind of a reformist liberal perspectives where we should do some different types of policing up to radical perspectives that we should abandon policing as it is at all from my point of view, I saw uh, a big change. I think there is something like the, uh, there is a era before the Yellow Vest and there is something af the after the Yellow Vest. This movement was a big breathe. It was a really big breathe for us. And what happened after also, even the like what happened after the death of, uh, of George, George Floyd. Now, if I would like make, draw the landscape, of the social social uh, sphere, like the social life here uh, and political movements in France, I have much more hope than in 2018 before the Yellow Vest movement. Because as I said, as I told, like I think that today, like a big, a biggest part of the of the people, they are ready. I mean, they they have this conscious, they have this information. Just to give an example for 
let's say three years ago before and before 2018 our group we are like one of the only collective involved in a, on a radical way against police brutality in france being not uh, a family of victim i mean a political group with anarchist uh, thinking involved specifically in police brutality and in before 2018 we were just invisible invisible and our uh, not only we as a group but also the speeches we have and the idea we have and the information we gave it was very hard to explain to people for example what is a rubber a rubber bullet weapon like uh, when we say like uh, what is a flashball people they didn't know what is a flashball actually and now like i think there is no one percent of the popul- of the people who doesn't who don't know like most of the people they they know and the police brutality was so obvious and so visible every day in the media, every day on the social media, that today the people are like ready. And this COVID pandemic added something above. It means like it was even uh, not only about the, I mean, it's it's not only about the police brutality and like uh, the Yellow Vest movement and the social like struggle. It's also about... Uh, in general, how the government, how the politicians deal with people. And uh, I think more people are much more uh, suspicious toward uh, institutions, governments. And so you have something very positive. Now I'm waiting, and I think many people are more waiting of the end of these pandemic restrictions to see how the people were, will uh, get back to the street, will uh, get back to the, sh- the sh- social life in a very critical way. And we have some very nice example. For example, during the COVID pandemic, we had like in uh, New Year Eve, there were a big party, uh, forbidden party. And uh, actually, you can think, have a, the, uh, whatever opinion you have about this, is it good or bad to do a party during the, the COVID pandemic? Is it stupid or not? This is not the, the question is uh, how the people react afterwards when this was re- repressed by the police. You have now uh, like m- much more people who uh, understand the sense of life. <laughs> I don't know how to say this, like who understand the sense of gathering together or finding a new way to be together and uh, a new, uh, like a sense of community. And this is very strong. And the Yellow Vest movement was already a first step when all these people who are never involved in politics came to the roundabouts to meet on the roundabouts during months and months. And every Saturday, all these people, they built between themselves a, a strong solidarity. And this remains, this is not dead with the COVID pandemic. This is not dead with the, Yellow v- the end of the Yellow Vest movement. This is still inside the people. And I, I think that at some point it will... In one or two years, it will bring something uh, interesting and something new and interesting to the society, to the actual society. And uh, I just hope, like as everywhere, just hope that the um, the conspiracy theory and uh, and all this shit will not win, because this is also one uh, thing that got uh, stronger after this period. And uh, yeah, if to 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 answer more directly to your question. Many uh, solidarity networks, even if they are online, on Telegram, on Facebook, they become became more uh, stronger. I mean, in fact, it's stronger. During the beginning of the COVID pandemic, for example, there were like Telegram groups of uh, uh, solidarity between people where you had like uh, thousands of people organizing together on a network called COVID Entraide, for example. And uh, the network of the family of victims is uh, was never stronger than uh, today because uh, now we have like uh, between 30 and 40 families of victims who are organized in a network called the Réseau d'Entraide. And they are able now, when someone is killed by the police or someone is injured by the police, in, the, in, in something like one or two weeks, they are put they are in contact with all the others and they can decide they can join like uh, this network and this is something that was not existing before 2018 it was very marginal it was very hard like to organize people on a national level uh, on this uh, topics so um, i don't know if i'm answering answering to your question but um i'm sure. full of hope anyway <laughs> a couple of years ago I was in France. I mean, I'm not going to France so often, but I was in France or not in France. I was outside of France 
and I was entering France with the car. Um, we were coming from Spain and we are stopped with a friend of mine at the border by the French cops and they're standing there and they're like maybe, I don't know, 10 of them, right? So they're a huge gang hanging out. They don't have anything to do. So they're stopping us and I thought, okay, whatever, border control, um, give your passports or whatever. But they drag us out of the car. They put us like, push us against the car and put the hands on the roof and just start sneaking around. And my experience is that you are like, you have to stay in control of what they're doing with your belongings at every point of what is happening. That's what I learned, you know, um, because in the Eastern Europe, there is a huge chance that they will put some plant some drugs on you or they would plant some fake evidence or whatever shit they have. Put some Molotov cocktails in your trunk or, or shit. Um, so I'm trying like to keep control and they're like trying to push me back to the car and I'm like, oh, fuck, this is really great. I feel like at home and, and they are like, where are you from? And I'm saying, yeah, I'm actually from Belarus, this kind of like last dictatorship, you know, of Europe. And, and the guy is like looking to me really angry. He's like, he, you can see that he got offended and he's telling me to me like, no, 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 this is not a dictatorship. This is democracy. Here people are free, you know, and we, I'm looking like just, just zooming outside of this situation. I see myself in the whole situation and I understand, yeah, like in your head, you are free and maybe some people are, but in general, we're still in the same shit. Um, and I think like they have in their head their, this perspective, some of them at least, that they are defending democracy there, like the, the last defendants against the, from one side, um, Islamists that are going to bomb everyone in France and fr from the other side, uh, the crazy anarchists or whoever is coming, Stalinists, Lenin coming back from Moscow to take over France. But at the same time, from your perspective, how much actually freedom police protects? And on the other side, how much it threatens our freedom right now from your own experience in France? I think one of one good example to answer to this is the actual very uh, hunting against Muslims in France because this is like showing how how something is breaking uh, is breaking now and I will explain what I mean. Uh, I think I think until now and also this yellow vest movement changed a lot. Like until this uh, very recent period, we have something in France called la République, you know, and this. Uh, was something indestructible. You could not destroy it. It was something, it's very strong in the mind. And even in the mind of liberal left people, even far uh, like uh, extreme left people, like link uh, extreme left people, you, are, you have this myth of uh, the Republic, you know, of this democracy who were always like, like uh, stronger than everything. And even you as an anarchist in France, always you have this thing that is above you in your own family in discussion is, but if you have not the state, what would you do without the state? Because the state is the health insurance. The state is like, you know, the Providence state is very strong in France and the social, the social, uh, the social system is very strong in France. I mean, it was, it's, it, it's becoming to be worse. I don't know if it's a good thing because I'm happy to have allowance. I'm happy to have health insurance. And most of the people, they would lie if they would say that they are not because we are lucky to have this. But I don't know how to say, but uh, now this myth is uh, being broken. It's, it's broken. So now if you say I'm a Republican, there are less and less people uh, who will understand what do you mean with Republican. Uh, because uh, the cops, for example, they are protecting this idea they have about the republic, the democracy. This is what the cops, I mean, until now, they were like believing it. And they had this strong belief that they are, even if they make bullshit, they are defending something like uh, a democratic civilization that is better than, uh, than anything else. That, uh, and always one of the arguments you had in front of you was, uh, if you are uh, criticizing this uh, system, it was like, uh, it's, it's worst. Everywhere around, it's worst. Like, uh, you should be happy to have this system. But this is changing very, very, very strongly now. And people, they don't believe anymore in the in Republic. And the cops, even the cops, they don't. Because uh, this recent movement and this recent period was so discreditating uh, this idea of democracy and this idea of republic that even the cops 
they revealed themselves. And now you have a huge amount of cops who are just not even, uh, they are not even like speaking about republic or democracy anymore. Now they openly say like, we are enemies. And even the this was a scandal last year when uh, the chief of, of po the police the chief of the police department of Paris who is like a fascist to say honestly, uh, he said uh, to a yellow vest protester he told him uh, to her in the street we are not in the, on the same side. Uh, in French it would mean like uh, on n'est pas dans le même camp. Uh, he was expressing this change that uh, there is uh, two sides the side of the power and the side of the people. And this makes the thing so obvious that even the police now is on the side of the power. And when do you when you say something to him to them, if you say like uh, we are not in democracy, they even sometimes the cop they say like uh, shit about the democracy. Uh, we uh, we uh, like they don't they don't even try to to convince you that the republic is something we should struggle for. It's um, It's it's really it's what you what you can like notice and now they are like openly far right you know they are openly far right and they are openly showing these ideas they are openly like uh, supporting the far right movements they are openly like uh, uh, saying some very racist thing in the street when while before there was something like a psychological blockade uh, blockage I don't know uh, how to say this but there was something like if I am a cop I can think what I want but I cannot say what I want in the street because I have to uh, to preserve this idea of republic and democracy. And now they don't care. They are, I don't know how, why it's, it, it changed like this. I think it's more the tension inside the society is so huge now that now they have to, ch they have to choose their side. I think the situation you were living for some years uh, with these cops on the border control I can say you, I think you would not live the same situation now because you would not have cops so self-confident and so uh, offended because you are criticizing the, uh, you are comparing like their system to dictatorship. They are like quite happy to have a strong uh, president. They are quite happy. And what I wanted to say, yeah, about the, why I spoke about the, um, the Islamophobia and all the measures against Muslims. I don't know if you follow what's happening now in France, but they are, trying every day every day there is a scandal uh, because uh, they want to implement a lot of new laws they are uh, speaking about uh, to forbid to they forbid it actually they did it now to forbid to uh, underage uh, girls to wear the hijab in the street they are forbidding they want to forbid uh, to students to pray in the um, in the university i don't know where they saw that some people they pray in the university Uh, they want to forbid the halal. Uh, they, they want to take a lot of measures against like uh, Muslim habits and Muslim like uh, religious habits, and they do it really in uh, in this uh, way to struggle against what they call separatism. And it's interesting. The new minister of uh, internal affairs uh, chose this vocabulary for the first time in French history. He's using the term separatism to speak about community or communities not respecting the Republic, not respecting uh, uh, the French state. And uh, they are now, they're just uh, voting now also a law called Law uh, Against Separatism. And uh, I think it's, it's really an all this philosophical change in our French, in the French society, like saying that, yeah, there is two sides, the side of the power and the side of the others. And Or, or you follow, follow the side of the powers, or you are a separatist. And if you are a separatist, they compare you like quite directly to a support to terrorism. They make like you know, they make every philosophical uh, concepts uh, very narrow, very summarized, like saying like uh, things. Uh, how to say to assimilate like people like me, for example, for them. It's much more easy now to say that I'm I'm a terrorist or I'm a support of terrorism or I'm a proto-terrorist than five years ago. Five years ago, it would be ridiculous to say this in a way. And now it's like all is done, like everything is done and all the legal implementation, the legal, uh, like the legislation, like the, the change of the law and the change of the mentality and the public uh, speeches, 
they are more and more uh, giving the possibility, like giving a place to the far right ideas, actually. And the policemen in this situation, the, the cops, they just follow. Inside them, they are fascists. And now they can like they can openly say it. They can openly like admit it and say, "Yeah, I'm happy. I want the Muslims to go out of the country. I want to close the borders. I want to punch all the leftists. Uh, all the leftists should go to prison. They are all terrorists and and they are they are homophobic. They are all what you want. They are like uh, they are like far right and they say it openly. And this is a big change. I I don't want to say like." everything changed like in these two years but uh i think this is why we're all a bit stoned and uh, surprised and we don't know how to react in this situation now and we don't know what will happen after the covid uh, restrictions when we will be able to go freely to the street and do whatever we want because we are not breathing anymore when we see uh we follow the information the news in our country we're just thinking that everything is uh is going to a civil war I'm, I'm, I have hope on one side and on the other side, like, I don't know what, what, what could be worse, like, as the situation now. Well, let's <laughs> hope that the things will develop in the better direction, right? I kind of yeah, gave I up, you I, I gave up uh, the, the, the philosophy of the worse it gets, the better it will be, like this kind of a reactionary idea that the more people and the worse situation, the more people affected and the worse situation gets, the more resistance would come. I kind of lost this idea. Like 10 years ago, you ask me, I would think, oh yeah, cool. The things with the state, the things with repressions are getting worse. So now is the time to get organized. Now is the time like we're getting revolution tomorrow. Now I don't have this perspective where I'm a little bit skeptical about it because there are thousands of different versions of how it can get bad. But I really hope that the things will get also better like we eventually our work and the work of thousands and thousands of people who are fighting for the free society will actually bring some results good results like yeah, not really so. bad that's why i said before that i'm quite uh, full of hope because even if the conditions are much harder now to resist there is any way like uh, i think uh, a biggest uh, sense of uh, solidarity uh, i feel it and that was it for today. Thanks for listening. You can find the archive of our radio shows on the website of the Anarchist Network Dresden. Elephant in the Room is a proud member of Channel Zero Network, an English-based anarchist radio podcast network run by radical media makers from around the world.